Okay, everybody. Uh, this is the uh, point in time of 5:30. Actually, it's about an after. Um, I'm going to call the meeting to order. We do have a quorum, and thank you for arriving for a uh, an early start or our new starting time, I should say, of 5:30. Uh, so I hope this works out for everybody. Um, no roster changes. Mark did distribute an updated copy of the roster with all the changes that we had through August um, with the agenda and the minutes of the last meeting. So hopefully you uh, received that. Um, I also wanted to make you aware, uh, particularly for the folks who've been added to the roster more recently, just in case you weren't aware, and uh, thanks to, to Donna, um, we, we have a Google Docs page for the, for the committee. And if you don't have access or haven't checked recently to see if you still have access, you may want to do that and check with Mark if you don't have access. But Donna's done a nice job of reorganizing all our material that we've created to date, the content that we've created to date on that Google Docs page um, with tabs and folders to make it a little bit easy to find things. So um, again, for the folks who have been added to the committee more recently, just make sure you have access to that. And uh, if you don't, just check with Mark. So thanks, Donna, for taking care of that. Appreciate that. So. Uh, okay, the first order yeah. of business. And quick, and quick question on that. Mark? I was looking at the list, and one member is listed in three different positions with a voting member as all of them. Does David vote three times, or <laughs> things, or once? No, <laughs> that's just the idiosyncrasy of the MSBA's okay. roster. I didn't know if the, mem the person got it or if the position got the vote. No, it's just it has. The, there are certain categories of individual and function within the MSBA rostering structure yeah. that we have to follow, and that results in David being one of them. I think Sarah is another one that gets listed multiple times as a couple. And each time we show that individual, we show that they're a voting member, but it doesn't mean they have multiple votes. So <laughs> thanks for the question. <laughs> OK, first order of business is the approve the uh, September 24th meeting minutes that were previously distributed. Again, thank you, Debbie, for crafting those. The motion will approve. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, so voted. And I'll quickly turn it over to our OPM and designer team. So Mitch, I guess, up first. Yeah, uh, thanks for having us tonight. Uh, we'll start off with keeping our normal um, order here with project budget update. Um, currently, this time, since we met last, there's been no invoices, so there's actually no budget update, but I just want to keep going with that practice to present the budget. Um, if there's any questions on it, we can take any, but I don't think there will be any since there's been no updates. Any, any questions? Though? <laughs> All right. Um, next is just a reminder of the MSBA overview. I know this is a large group, some of you in and out. Um, so we are on step three, the feasibility study. Um, then you can see this goes all the way down the line to schematic, funding the project, DD, construction, and completion, but it's just a good reminder of where we are in the process. And I'll hand it over to James to run through the work plan. Okay, so um, just doing a, an update on the work plan since we were here last. Uh, this line here, we met with police and fire, discussed, we ended up discussing two sites because the Spring Street site you know, was voted um, off. We did talk about it, but um, we really focused on McDonald and uh, Howard. Um, the issues are, as, as may be expected, are, are, are access. Um, it seems like there's pretty good, um, pretty good ability to get to both of the sites, but traffic and limited uh, width of, of road at McDonald and traffic at Howard. Um, you know, pose some, some challenges. Um, we've also continued with the educational visioning, and I'm going to present um, just a little update on that. And we've had a uh, walkthrough with our engineers, mechanical, structural, electrical, civil, um, plumbing, fire protection for, of, of these buildings, of the, the two buildings and sites. And then here we are today, October 8th. We'll be talking about the educational visioning update, the existing conditions, walkthrough, um, site selection information, and back to back to PMA for site selection information, and then um, a really detailed discussion about enrollment, school consolidations, program sizes, and what those might look like on, on the two sites. Uh, the rest of the work plan is as you've seen it 
last at the last session. I'm not going to go through it um, item for item, um, but uh, there it's in the presentation, so you can review it if you have any questions. Uh, bring it back to next. Um, you saw this last time at the last SBC meeting. We went around and um, everyone wanted to uh, gave um, you know told us what their project goal was, what their concerns were. We've um, put these into sort of broad categories, this building for West Bridgewater, uh, building for educational needs now and in the future, um, public process, community support, community outreach, and cost and schedule. Again, I'm not gonna go through each of these. Um, I know they were distributed to the committee. I, I, I showed them here because if there's anything that we got wrong or we missed, um, for, for anybody uh, watching at home, you can go back and watch the last um, SDC meeting to hear the individual points from the committee member who, who brought it up and the discussion around those points. James, um, let me just take a pause here. Does anybody have any questions on the summary of those notes that were gathered at the last meeting? And again, Mark did distribute those separately. Um, does anybody have any questions on those before we move on? Awesome, okay. That I'll keep going. Um, this is just sort of an update. We, we had a, this, a full day um, educational visioning session, and many of you were there. Um, what I want you to focus on here is the fourth bullet define the ideal West Bridgewater Elementary School experience. This was looked at through, um, through the lens of child development, how, best, how do kids learn. Um, and taking it through to space type features and identity and, and adjacencies for the school. But the, the focus was really to define what the best elementary school education and experience could be for West Bridgewater students. Um, there will be, uh, this was just last Friday, there will be a full uh, report that comes out of that um, that will be distributed and, and I'll be bringing pieces of it back as it gets um, condensed and uh, uh, digested. Um, there were a lot of activities. It was a very active day. We got a lot of great information. Um, one of the things I want to point out, mostly not because it was the definitive vote. Um, there was sort of a straw poll about which grade configuration um, sort of fit the the goals of, of each of the groups best and each of the people that participants. Um, that's that slide on the far right. What that shows is 16 votes for the full, um, you know, pre-K through six, uh, seven votes for pre-K through four, one for um, one through six, and none for one through three. Again, this is just information. Um, and it's, it's one data point, and I bring it up now and, I, and today because we're going to be going through a lot of pros and cons about those great configurations later in this presentation. Um, I do have a lot of information on these slides, and you can go through it um, when this, is, this uh, presentation is distributed. The big picture for the walkthroughs um, at Roselle. The, the big issue for architectural is the, the change in levels. It's really not accessible. You know, you enter and then you go up to, a, to an academic wing and then back down to another academic wing, and those ramps are, don't meet um, ADA or uh, mass access. Um, structurally, the building seems is, is very sound. Um, from a systems point of view, uh, Really, the picture there is that most of these systems are, are either past or you know, coming close to end of, life, end of useful life. Um, and for a new project, none of these systems would need today's codes or energy codes, um, and all of them would be updated. Also, there are no sprinklers in either of the two. Um, I already talked a little bit about the site. The, the biggest issues here are about access. Um, for Howard, the existing building really is, is in very good shape. Um, it's renovated, it was fully renovated um, with additions in 1993. Um, 
similarly, and, and so the, the building would be um, possible for reuse. Again, the structure is sound. The systems are really the same. They're, they're, they're at end of life, um, even though they're a little bit newer than, than the Roselle systems. And again, no sprinklers throughout the building. Um, the, the big issues on the site there are traffic, traffic at the center of town, adding more people to that location, as well as the big issue being septic, and we've talked about that before. So with that, um, any questions on any of that? I can discuss them much longer, but I think uh, getting, to the, <laughs> getting to the meat of it is, is, is what's coming later. So with that, I'm going to pass off to Mitch. Yeah, let me just preface this before. So Art at the last meeting asked a question about other sites in town on town-owned land. And um, it was a good question to ask because um, we had started the discussion as part of a bi-weekly meeting that we do between PMA and uh, HMFH and Mark and myself. Um, and they had started the process of looking at the town-owned sites. Um, so that was something that was in process. MSBA does that. Um, as a part of the due diligence for us as a committee, they do require us to go through the process to look not just at the sites we're thinking about, but anything else that might be available in town. So that's what we're going to go over now is, uh, is a summary of that process that you know, the PNA has gone through. Yep, thanks. So what we did is we identified any town-owned land uh, using GIS, Mass Mapper, uh, local town information, of anything over five acres that we think could be buildable, identified as buildable. So then we do some due diligence, dig into it, and see what the lot actually is, or the parcel actually is. A lot of these, we, we actually found, there was 40, uh, we lost Spring Street, so that's 39, just in this list. And then, so two of those would be uh, Howard and Roselle, and then the other 37 are all these ones that are shown in red on these next coming slides. So whether it be, um, you know, already have the transfer station on it or water department property or town hall so some of those pop up so those are easily eliminated some of the other ones will have wetlands that we think will be difficult um, or potentially close to a residential area or for example far away from this campus location to remove a campus-like feel for the school uh, department as a whole so i don't think we need to run through all 37 of them uh, this list will be uh, distributed to everybody as part of this presentation, and we'd be happy to take questions um, if anybody has, you know, maybe another property that they're thinking about, or uh, one of the ones on here that we might have said is not buildable due to a certain reason. Does anyone, does anyone have um, a, a piece of townhome land that they're aware <laughs> of that, they, that may or may not be on this list that they'd like to talk about before we move on? I mean, we think we've pretty much gone through the process and eliminated everything that even might be considered and limited ourselves to just spring uh, to uh, the Roselle site and the Howard Street site. Cheryl. I have a question because we are considering buying a piece of property, as you know, and I don't know if we looked at that as we, it's what, 25 acres? Dave, I don't know. It's 23 and a half acres. Okay, and it's not far from the center of town. Right, so the question is, is no, we're aware of that obviously. Um, and the issue would be really one of timing um, because obviously the town has to go through the process. It's gone through a, a recommendation through the Board of Selectmen at this point. It needs to now go to town meeting. Town meeting. Um, and it would, that, that process would take us outside of the feasibility. So if oh. we're serious about considering that particular site as a potential school site for this project, we in good conscience would have to go back to MSBA and say we're going to have to call a timeout on feasibility under the, the timing of the guidelines that they've set up for us, which would basically end the process and we would have to start all over. Thank you for clarifying. Yep. So you can see the two that we identified as green um, right now are, like I mentioned, Roselle McDonald and Howard Street. Any other questions on site selection? I just had a question. There's no way to kind of fast track that purchase to meet our needs. Got a fast track of his approach that you? So quite frankly, 
we are fast tracking it. You know, because it's um, the selectmen will meet next week. They'll set the date, which will, I think at this point is going to be November 14th. That we're 98 percent of the way there. Um, but by state law, you need two weeks posting time. You need three to four days to comply with the 14 days. So you really need three weeks. So to go from October 16th to November 14th is about as fast as we can do it. Other than that, the other reason we couldn't do it a little earlier is because we used these school facilities and in some of those dates that we wanted to target are being utilized. And on top of that, on November 5th, we have an election. Mm -hmm. So um, so you put all that together and November 14th really is the fastest we could actually do it. I mean, one thing to think about is that, you know, if the town does go through that purchase and and we move forward with an option either at Roselle or Howard, the configuration of either of those two locations may result in us having to look at another site to um, to replace fields, you know, athletic fields, and who knows that may be an option uh, for use at that site if it's purchased by the town. So may not be where we would end up with a school under the timing of this feasibility study, but it may be appropriate for some other related use outside of this school park. Just to cover our, kind of cover ourselves a little bit though, can that at least take a look at the lots, check the configuration and see if it's something you might, you might end up putting it in the tank anyway. Yep. That's so just sure maybe saying, check, yeah, yeah. just so it doesn't come up afterwards because people aren't going to understand why if we're sitting here on October 4th and we're going to buy that on November 14th. You couldn't get that in this thing for something that we're not going to have building for a couple of years. Just, yeah, we can, we can just, just, just at least give it a once over make yeah. sure. Yeah, we'll take a look at it, we'll add it to the list, we'll see where, you know, it could be like you said, it could be in the red, but we'll, we'll take a yeah. look, look at it, check it off the box. Anything else on site selection? <coughs> okay. So this gets a little in depth. Um, I'm just going to remind everybody of the, the, the four grade configurations, um, and then we're going to look at what each of these grade configurations mean on each of the two sites. Um, so the first and, and smallest is uh, first through third, which replaces just Roselle, um, 450 students and about 70,000 square feet. These square footages, I want to be careful, um, these are directly out of the MSBA guidelines. They don't account for any of the potential district needs beyond the MSBA guidelines. Um, so it doesn't account for the district offices, it doesn't account for a larger gym, which we've heard of from a, a number of sources as a potential desire, um, and it doesn't uh, account for um, the uh, West Bridgewater's specific special education needs, which often end up being larger than what the MSBA's guidelines initially suggest. And there's probably other things within this category that may come into this project and uh, increase that sort of thing. But as a you know, starting point, that first uh, grade configuration is about 70,000 square feet. Um, the second one is pre-K through fourth, which replaces um, Roselle, Spring, and takes one grade out of Howard to make Howard uh, less crowded. About 750 students plus about 75 pre-K students, and is, oh look at that, and is 125,000 square feet. Uh, uh, the next um, grade configuration is first through sixth, replaces Roselle and all of Howard, leaving Spring. 930 students and 125,000 square feet, approximately. And then the largest is all of it, right? Pre K through sixth, replacing Roselle, Spring Street, and Howard, 930 students about 75, uh, plus about 75 pre k students at about 160,000 square feet. Okay, so 
again, we're looking kind of at just at footprints. Yeah. Just, to, um, just so we can have an idea, I think this building, I we about 140 to 150. I think it's 142. So that 160 that's on there is fairly similar in size, just so we all understand from the scope standpoint. Yeah. I have a couple of areas on here. I'm sorry, this was a very last minute slide. This number should be uh, 1,070. Before we post this on the website, I will for K through six. For, for, for K through six, plus 75 to K. Yep. This number should be 1,070. Um, so again, we're just looking at, at, uh, at footprints like we did uh, last time. The key to what I'm going to be talking about on the next slides is really about what it means to put this grade configuration on this site, agnostic of the footprint. The footprint could be here, it could be an ad reno, it could be um, on the other side of the brook. Certainly will be a different shape by the time we're done with this. Um, James, sorry. I think it would be helpful in all these slides if you would speak from the slide and be able to point to what it is you're talking about in terms of what it is we're looking at. And orientation, I think, would be helpful. Mitch can tag the slides. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Sure. sure. So West Elm is here. Sorry, North Elm. North Elm is here. Um, and this is the access onto the, the Roselle site, which is quite tight. Um, and that is, a ch that is going to be a challenge. Uh, from what I've seen, I'm not sure we can make that route wider. We need more information, um, but I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit skeptical at this point whether we can make that wider. Um, we're showing an idea of kind of straightening out the S curve as it comes on to um, the West L site. You'll also see later on um, the possibility of, of a connection to Crescent Street. So Crescent Street is here. The existing building, the existing um, Roselle building is this dashed uh, outline. Um, and so where what this proposes is a new first through th third grade on two stories, um, kind of a public part of the school and a more academic part of the school, that's the two colors, um, and potential roadways around um, and site circulation. And then once that's built and this students move out of here, you have the potential for new fields here. This doesn't address parking yet. It doesn't address um, uh, I mean, uh, uh, septic requirements. Um, one thing that's, that's, that's um, worth noting on both sites, both Howard and um, the Roselle site, is the, the septic systems are, are over 15 years old now. We typically think of a septic system uh, lifespan as, as about 20 to 30 years. Um, and by the time this is built, we'll be pushing into that, um, into that, you know, towards that time frame. Um, so potentially part of any project would be a new septic system. Um, on this site, it would be a septic field. On the Howard site, it would potentially would be a, a wastewater treatment plant. Okay. So, Next slide. Down or right? Down. <laughs> Maybe do that. Um, so again, what, what I'm going to be talking about on these slides, these advantages and disadvantages, are, um, are really about the grade configuration on the site, not the footprint itself. So for example, this grade configuration is the lowest cost option no matter where it goes on the site, um, because it's the smallest building. Um, it provides new, right-sized, educationally appropriate spaces for just the first through third grades. It's the minimal, um, it has the minimal septic work, again, because it's, it's the smallest number of people and the smallest water flow. <coughs> it also is, is minimal septic work partially because, um, you know, it's matching the population on the site now. So it's not adding, um, other than uh, um, enrollment enlargement, it's not adding population. Um, we believe that the traffic pattern and emergency access can be approved. This can be improved. This is tricky. Um, again, it has to do with 
looking for ways to widen that road by a lane if we can, um, and looking for other possible locations of access, maybe the Crescent, um, maybe being able to strengthen the, the um, emergency response only connection to, to Goldie. Um, it also, uh, uh, an advantage of this enrollment on this site is it maintains two gyms within the elementary school system. Next slide. The disadvantages are that it does not maximize state funding opportunity. You're going to get, you're going to spend less, and so you'll get less back from the MSBA. Um, it leaves the district offices, pre-K and K, at the Spring Street site here, um, which we already know is, you know, the site's crowded. Um, and the building, you know, is, is the building that it is. Um, it also leaves the fourth through sixth grades at Howard, all of the, all of the grades at Howard. So it doesn't do anything for these two other buildings. And it has the minimum, minimal positive impact on education in West Bridgewater of these options. Next. And you know what? Before I go on to the next one, any, any questions on that? This question, do you agree with the Oh yeah, any other or any other, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anything you see that you don't agree with or, or would want to add? Try I mean, it's broad brushed, it might be a little smaller things, but well, one of the non starters would be the Howard School remaining three grades. I think that's just you know, with the MSB projected enrollment, it can't support that. Okay. Yeah, I think we'd end up either building another new school as soon as we finish this one, right. or maybe even two. Right. But we're still under an obligation because of the way the statement of interest has been accepted with MSB. Just keep that in mind. Yeah. This enrollment configuration is one option that we have to put forward for consideration. We can put it forward without our recommendation, we can put it forward with us strongly recommending against it, but we have to put it forward. And, and what we would do, you know, when we're summarizing everything is we're going to capture your comments, what we have here is this is why we don't put this forward. Right? Just have to give the, the background uh, clarification to MSPA. So they look at it and go, oh, okay, I understand. In many ways, this here is us giving it that consideration. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, so the next grade configuration, again on the Rhodes L site, is pre-K through four. The footprint, you know, same same orientation. North L, I, I keep wanting to say West L, but North L, but I've learned that. Mm -hmm. uh, my last project had a, a, a West L. <laughs> um, here we show the potential for connecting to to Crescent as a, as a second means of egress. And there'd be a lot of study of, well, what does that mean? Does that mean in from mm -hmm. North L and out at Crescent? Or parents come in this way and buses come in this way? You know, there's a lot of potential if we can get that second, second entrance. It's got plenty of challenges. Lots of um, pre-removal, crossing of the brook, um, a very small, simil you know, similar to this side, a very small um, adjacency to Crescent, um, but it's something that we, we really want to look into, and, and we think this may be um, really beneficial. Okay, so pre-K through four, about 125,000 uh, square feet facility. Again, build it, um, this one on three stories, build it in this footprint or another potential footprint, maybe a two-story footprint. Um, then take down the existing building, and, and that's an opportunity for, for other amenities, fields, parking, septic, to get to be the Next. So then looking at that grade configuration on the site, um, it's a lower cost than the, co you know, advantages, lower cost than the, than the highest cost option. Um, it provides uh, new right-sized educationally appropriate spaces for, for pre-K through four. Um, it reduces traffic and overcrowding at Howard, um, and, and it reduces traffic and, and overcrowding on this site as well. Um, it avoids a wastewater treatment plant um, at, at Howard by building over there and dealing with septic you know, locally as opposed to a town-wide septic. It also potentially extends the life 
of the existing lit teaching field at Allen um, by reducing the student load on that system. Um, again, we're listing traffic patterns and emergency access can be improved with a lot of research to, to be done on that. Um, it removes Spring Street um, from, from this site here, um, potentially opening it up for future uses. Um, anything that happened for that, whether it's to reuse the building or to remove the building and use it, the, the, the land for fields, is a separate town funded, would have to be a, a separate town funded project. Um, and again, it maintains two elementary school gyms in the system. Okay. I would say, Question. based on what Mark said, we missed the point that then Howard would be down to two grades. Right. As an advantage, and, and Howard would be less correct. crowded. Correct. Correct. Yeah. It removes the overcrowding of Howard. Yeah. Right. Yeah, just a question. Just you said it eliminates Spring Street School, but it's, are you including the admin at the Roselle site? Because the admin should, would still be in the Spring Street School, wouldn't it? This removes the Spring School Street School. Okay. Where's the admin go? The admin would go with it. Okay, the admin would go with well, this building? Well, actually, it doesn't actually, say that. That's why I'm asking. Next slide. Um, district office, so, so a disadvantage is is that the district offices, if they moved with this, okay. located at West L, will not be near the 5th to 12th grades. It will not be, near might not be the right word. It will not be walking distance um, to the 5th the to 12th grades. There is potential that the, and that's what this note is, there is potential that the district offices would be relocated to the now less crowded Howard if there was enough room both to you know, there's a study that needs to be done to understand if that's, a, if that's an option. That would require um, some renovation work, and um, and that would be a town funded. Yeah, but I think the idea is to move all Spring Street, including Admin, out of that building. No, it was just on the first part. You didn't mention anything about that, yeah, about correct. the Admin going. So I, was, I should let you get to this slide. It's all right. It's all right. Um, building. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, disadvantages. Again, not, 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 well, it's not the lowest cost option. Um, it does not fully maximize the state funding opportunity. It does more so than the option we just looked at, but, but less so than it could have, which, which, you know, may be fine. Um, fifth and sixth grades remain at the existing Howard School. Again, the Howard School would be, would have some breathing room, it would have room for our classrooms and for enough classrooms for expansion. Um, enrollment expansion, but but um, but they would still be in that old building. Um, we've already talked about district offices, and it increases the traffic at the McDonald's site, the Rose L site. Can I just ask if the Spring Street is part of any project? Is the taking down of that school so it is or is not reimbursable? Part of a different project. Part of a different project. Right. We have to ask, but yeah. um, okay. typically, it, you know, like they'll pay for you to knock down one, one school. Okay. And then site work is capped, so that is one of the caps, right? Um, this is demo cap as well. Yeah, yeah site for demo yeah. for uh, eligible percentage. Thanks so much. Uh, any, sorry, any other anything we missed? Okay. So this is showing um, a very similarly sized footprint, um, a very similarly sized facility um, for the first group six grades on the Roselle site. It's very, the, 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 the graphic here actually is, is the same, but the, it has a slightly different pros and cons. Next slide. Um, lower cost than the highest is the same. Provide here, this is different, provides new right sized educationally appropriate spaces for the first through sixth grade. It removes um, it removes the school at Howard and removes all of that school traffic. Again, it avoids the wastewater treatment plant. Um, traffic pattern can be improved, and it removes the Howard School site, allowing for other potential town uses. Um, on that, on that site, either in that building or on the ground. Next. Again, it's not the lowest cost option. It does not fully 
uh, maximize the state funding opportunities. Here's a, a, a big con and, and related to a lot of what we've been talking about. It leaves the district offices, pre-K and K, at the Spring Street School on this site. Um, it, it increases traffic at Roselle. Uh, it does uh, reduce the number of gyms in the elementary school system to one. Um, unless a, a second gym was built at this site, or perhaps a larger gym, and we have heard a lot about that, um, that would likely be square footage that would need to be funded solely by the town, not by the MSBA. Not partially by the MSBA. Next, next slide. I think another disadvantage would also be that that's not, that school as well would be uh, oversized. There would be enough space in that school uh, for an increasing numbers in kindergarten and high school. In the, the existing spring school. Got it. Um, so that brings us to the, the big one. This is pre-K through six um, on this site. Um, it gets to be a big footprint. This is a three-story footprint. It's a big school at 160,000 square feet. Next. This, for the first time, maximizes that state funding opportunity. Um, spend more, get more, I guess. Um, the bigger it is, and the, the more um, there'll be for the MSBA to partake in. It provides new right-sized, educationally appropriate spaces for all of West Bridgewater's student population. That includes, you know, based on what, what you as a town have done over the, the last decade at that point, or, or maybe by, by the time it's built, you know, 14 years, let's say, um, from kindergarten through the end of high school, will, will be, students will be in, um, you know, educationally appropriate spaces. Uh, it avoids the wastewater treatment plant, as we've talked about. Uh, tra traffic and emergency access can be improved. Um, it removes a lot of traffic from the center of town, um, both, both off, moving it off of this site and the Howard School site. It removes Howard School um, from that site, allowing for other uses. That would be a, a town funded project. There's more. Um, it removes the Spring Street School from this site allowing it for other uses, but that would be a town site. This one's a repeat. Um, and, and it has, you know, of, of these, it has the maximum positive impact on education. That's a good one. Any questions or comments on this one? The, the only, I think the one advantage, or all my favorite, but one advantage to this, is that if we're going to look at doing it all on Howard, there's going to be an impact during construction on where school children in the, in the, in the street, I mean, this, uh, staff is going to be. Here, there will be no impact on any educational facilities while it's being built. Because it's a brand new building. It has the potential, I mean, it, it will impact. Yeah, it's close to the. It will impact the, the students who are so in the Roselle in that. But you'll still be able to have educational facilities. Yeah education going on in that building. Yes. Yeah, I, I think the concern is going to be if we put on the Howard footprint, is that going to have an adverse impact on education during construction? Because that building is going to be either being torn down, replaced, or added on. I, I think everything we've looked at so far, and I'm going to adopt and run through those, but that's a great point. Everything we've looked at so far assumes that there's no swing space. And so we either build next to it, and we've done that. We're, we've built pretty close to, to an existing school. Um, there, are, there are challenges that the CMs deal with related to that, and like the design deals with related to that, but it can totally be done. Um, you know, the closer you are, the more disruptive it is to what's happening in those classrooms. Um, so it is a con, but it is possible. Um, yeah, I will, I, will or, just, I will just say from the construction standpoint that we do see it pretty often, like within 50 feet of an after school. And that's part of the job that we're here to make sure that that goes smoothly when the construction is taking place and you have children learning 50 feet from you. And we've built... I've been within four. Yeah. <laughs> Carver, Carver was very close, wasn't it? No, we, I mean, we've been with we've yeah. multiple at eight, and uh, I think uh, Arlington's within four. Yeah. No, Arlington's within ten. Oh, Chelsea's Arlington's ten. Chelsea's <laughs> <So>. Okay. <clears throat> 
Um, so it was like really close. 50 feet. Plenty. Um, so, so sorry. So what I was saying was um, everything we've looked at either builds next to the tower or builds part of the building in fa a fa as a first phase that would allow the students from Howard to move out into that first phase and then build the rest of the building that allows the Spring Street and McDonald to then move in after phase two. Okay, disadvantages. It's the highest cost option. We knew that was coming. Um, it increases traffic at Roselle to this one more than the rest. Um, it reduces the number of gyms at the elementary schools to one. That's because, if it's not clear, that's because we'll, We'd be building a gym with this project, we'd be removing the Howard School. So there'd be one gym here, whether it's larger or you end up building two is a different question. Next. Well, if we don't demolish the Howard School, the gym is still there. I don't know if it would be kept up in the same way. Mm -hmm. One possibility is to, is to maintain the Howard School as a community community building. There may be some renovations required to make that truly useful, but that's definitely an option. Okay. Moving on to the Howard School site. We did not show a one through three enrollment on the Howard School site. Um, we didn't think it, it, it made sense to build a separate school on this site for one through three. You could um, it would fit. This one shows that it does fit, um, but but it, it just didn't seem to make sense. So we only showed the one that enrollment option on the Roselle site. This is a pre-K through four. North is up. Um, uh, this is Howard Street here, and the existing Howard Street building with the, the athletic fields and the um, septic. The existing septic. Um, there's actually a lot on this site, right? There's Friendship Park. There's the brand new pickleball courts. There's a little isolated wetlands. Um, we do show it, an option that builds over that. We, we think it's up a side so it can be moved. We still need to um, survey it and uh, make sure that's, that's feasible. Um, so here you're looking at pre-K through four. Uh, the idea here is to build on the west side of the site. It's a crowded piece of the site. Um, but it, it opens up this interesting opportunity where you have a, a student pl plaza between the two buildings, both buildings being entered off of that student plaza. Um, and, and so this, this really maximizes that concept of campus. Um, again, it, it, it takes the fourth grade out of Howard but Howard really isn't part of the project. Howard remains as it will, as you know, in this condition it's in, and fifth and sixth grade have room to expand into it. Next slide. Um, this is again lower than the highest cost option. Provides uh, it's, it's, a lot of these are very similar to the pre-K through four um, on on Roselle. Um, you know. Right, right size, educationally appropriate spaces for pre-K through four. Um, it does not reduce overcrowding. Yeah, it, it takes it. It takes it. Oh, right. At the Howard, at the Howard State. Excuse School me. Not yeah, the yeah, site. Not the School, not the site. School, not the site. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it removes the Roselle School, um, which again could be. You, that space can be used. It removes the Spring Street School, um, <coughs> clearing up space on this site. Um, it maintains two gyms, very close to each other. Um, and uh, all schools are, are close to the center of town, creating that campus. Yeah. Next. Disadvantages. Does not fully maximize the state funding opportunity like any of them that um, aren't the biggest. Um, it increases the daily load on the town septic, likely requiring a wastewater treatment plant, um, which is, you know, a space issue. 
We need space for a wet wastewater treatment plant. We need space for a reserve fuel. Both of them um, not where the existing septic is because while you're building those, you need your existing septic to be working. Um, the fifth and sixth grade remain at the existing Howard Street School um, and it creates a, a, a pretty cr crowded site. Um, two schools, uh, the new pre-K through four, the existing Howard, the library, the Council on Aging, um, again, Friendship Park, the Pickleball Courts, the Sports Field. And, you know, you might not be technically on the site, but it feels like it is the, um, the, the senior center, the Council on Aging. Any, any, uh, and increases traffic at that. Sir? Where would parking be in this? Um, parking would be uh, here, and we'd be looking for opportunities, um, you know, across the site, but we have not tackled that in, in the very last one. Yeah, again, that was a disclaimer up front, but none of these include those kind of details. I mean, it's strictly looking at, strictly from an enrollment standpoint. So. All right. Well, one thing also with the Council on Aging, not that necessarily it's ideal, but a lot of the access to things like the, when they pick up the meals and stuff, they come in off the Howard Street through that set. It really isn't set up there to allow an awful lot of people going in off the West Center and coming back out the West Center turning around. So that would when you get some pushback on it. the ability, you know, the usability of this Council on Aging site would be severely affected. Because of, because, because of access. Because there's a lot of access comes in through, actually through the school access road. Yeah, and full disclosure, there's not enough parking for council aging with there. And again, I recognize that, that, um, that we have not determined parking yeah. yet. Yeah. But I will tell you, we have yellowish building footprint is. That is overflow for the council on aging, which is commonly used for their special events. And to Art's point, is where they queue to be able to pick up their, their own meals on wheels. I see. I, that's really helpful to hear. There's two different things going on here. There's the footprint, and that that's all um, really good information about the potential of putting a building on the west side of Howard. And then there's the enrollment on this site, because this footprint could be here. And these pros and cons would be the same. Um, so I know there's a lot of information here, but kind of thinking about it in those two ways is, is useful. Okay, next. Uh, any, uh, sorry, anything else on that one before I go? Okay. Um, Howard with uh, uh, first three six. Um, two stories. It could be three in a smaller footprint, right? This is a big footprint. Uh, but just what does it mean for a two-story footprint? Here you see that. Um, but this time on the east side of Howard, this replaces Howard in full. So once this is built, the fields could be replaced. You know, the building could come down, and the fields could be replaced in, in this location. Um, potentially, right? Some of it might need to be septic. Some of it might need to be parking, depending on numbers. Um, but at least I, I would say at least one of the fields could be replaced. Um, Next. These are similar, low, low, lowest, you know, lower than the highest cost, provides the right um, educational space for first and six, removes McDonald, um, allowing for separate uses, and um, uh, it does not maxim maximize the, the potential for education in West Bridgewater, but it comes close. Next slide. Uh, does not fully maximize the state funding opportunity. Um, increases the daily load on the septic. We've talked about that. Critically, leaves um, pre-K and K at spring. As we've heard, spring is not going to be able to take the coming enrollment increase. Um, increases traffic at Howard and reduces the total number of chairs. Anything else here? Okay, and the last one. Um, is the big one, right? Is uh, pre-K through six, new three-story building, 160,000 square foot facility. This is our two-phase um, option that I, that I alluded to. So you, you first build um, the L with uh, the upper grades here, maybe maybe third through 
uh, six. Once that's built, you move out of Howard, you move, maybe you move a grade out of McDonald. Um, then you build phase two here. There is a, you know, there's some cost to a phase project. Um, there's a, a cost increase to a phase project. This is just one potential. There is, a, a, you know, a footprint that could be built that doesn't do this. Um, but then, but that, but the site would really drive that footprint um, in a big way. Um, okay, next slide. This maximizes that state funding opportunity, get the most money from the MSBA, provides the right, um, right size, educationally appropriate spaces for all of West Bridgewater students. It removes both Spring Street and Howard. Um, nope, sorry, both Spring Street and Roselle, um, allowing them for future uses. Um, it maximizes the positive impact on education in West Bridgewater. It's the highest cost option again, because it's the biggest footprint. Um, it increases the daily load on the septic, uh, probably requiring a new wastewater treatment plant. Um, it increases traffic to Howard site. It reduces the total number of gyms. These are all from the Next slide. Here's the last one I'm going to show you. This is <coughs> the potential for reusing and, and renovating um, the Howard School. So the idea here is um, is, is the whole um, enrollment, pre-K through six, building uh, the new school here, ultimately connecting to the, the existing Howard School. These would take the older grades, move um, move out of Howard in phase one. Phase two would be to renovate Howard potentially for pre-K and K in district offices. Um, but you know that we have to test what's what's the right uses for that that renovated space. This is a bad reno option that that um, keeps the existing building and gets the full um, enrollment. I don't have pros and cons for this because it's the same in terms of the enrollment on this site. It's the same as the one we just saw. This option and the previous one both eliminate the athletic field setting there. Both of them take the athletic fields. That's correct. Can you go back one? Um, that's correct. And we, you know, we'd be looking for places to um, <laughs> to, to, to try to fit, fit in yeah. some some athletic uh, fields in, but it would not. We don't think that this would. Uh, so that's a, that's definitely a con, which is right. Yeah. And let me just make this statement and see if it's correct or incorrect. We we in part of our information that we have to submit to MSBA have to include at least one as a renovation as a, option. As a option moving forward. Correct. So again, it can be one that we're not recommending, but we have to show an, an addition renovation. Can you go back to the first but, option? But, let, me, let me just um, say that what we, they want you to do is to move forward with three, right. and they could be one great configuration on one site one of those three, and, and with different right. options, one of them, at least one of them being that right option. The first one where you showed the, I forget what you called it, the student um, plaza. plaza. Yeah. I mean, I mean, theoretically, if you filled that in as a building space, I mean, that could be another added renovation approach there as well. Correct. Um, you connected that. You may yes. end up with, um, I mean, as a way to I, think, I think ideally you, you may end up with just too much interior space. You don't want classes. No, 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 no. I don't think there's still in so much that's connect them to make it. Well, he's trying to move it. He's trying to move it that way. That oh, okay. space yeah. Space. So I was really thinking about eliminating the. Yeah, it's, it's all about windows. Yeah. <laughs> so. We don't have to get into the details, but yeah. I mean, but there's, you there's could a, do you could make this into an ad reno scheme if you connect. That was my general question. That, that, yes. Right. All right. Yeah, when you're talking about the two phase option and that increases the cost, does MSBA increase what they're going to consider for a base cost, or they stick to whatever that initial square foot well, cost? Their construction is. cost per square foot doesn't change. So, so, if, so, so if ours increases, it doesn't increase the, the fact that time is, 
adding to the cost doesn't necessarily change what they're so it's more, just more out of pocket. Because of the caps that they have, yeah. the cost per square foot. Essentially, their, their effective reimbursement rate would be slightly lower. Yeah. The, the other thing, I mean, as we talk about a lot of details, like could this be a, an ad reno? Oops, mm -hmm. it's okay, it's okay. Let's say that. Um, one of the, the advantages to this one is that, which a lot of the others don't have, is that um, the, the academic wings have sort of north-south orientation, which is the most efficient for getting natural light deep into the classrooms and um, sort of reducing some, a little bit of the energy load um, and, and having you know, the right natural light. I think, I think it's worth explaining energy. what that means. I saw some good nodding in heads, but maybe not everyone understands. So, so the reason why it's more efficient is you know where the north and south line is coming from. It's much more clearly directional and understood. The east and west does this weird low angles and can come into the building in ways that are harder to manage. So that's why we, we consider uh, if we can optimize the most windows, especially classrooms, that are either facing north or facing south, then we know how to control the light that's coming in and optimize it or minimize it as you need to. The east and west light is more variable and comes in at outer angles, if that makes any sense. So there's, there's a sort of scientific background and when we, we start hearing us saying that you're like, why? <laughs> so. David. Yeah, can we just take that and I know Tom slide could you switch to that please? That one there. So the yellowish in the middle, is that the existing footprint? No, the existing footprint is, is, is this red. So red the, 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 in, in all of our footprints, the yellow is kind of public space and the uh, more, more orange is academic and it's, you know, it's approximate, they're, they're concise. So in that case, we are not tearing down the existing house because we're doing a renovation. Correct. So with that said, would we have an option then that we would still be able to get an MSBA reimbursement to take down either Spring or Rose McDonald's because we are not done on the site. I don't answer. I, I think that has, I, I'm with you, I think that has potential. There's a rationale there. But probably just for one. Probably just for one, but we don't know until we ask. <laughs> but we can take the most expensive one. <laughs> yes. 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 The largest square yeah. footage. Yeah. But their caps are going to cap it yeah. anyway, and, and I'm not sure. Ian, um, well, what funky will there be different, um, there'll be different heights on this, on the roof, and then so the point made is that because this doesn't necessarily have the same uh, location east, west, north, south, is the different heights going to have an impact on the sunlight going into some of the buildings? Yes. Any ad reno would require the existing school to be updated per code too. So every mm -hmm. correct. existing school would have to be outfitted with an automatic sprinkler system. And fully yeah, matted on Yeah, no, there, there's. Yeah, we would touch that school. Yeah. There's, there's. This is a full renovation. This, there is cost in yeah. this block. Um, definitely, including seismic, which was a big issue in, in this project. And looking at the renovation <coughs> on, options there, and you basically had to replace the whole roof deck. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. How about that? I'm going to call it wasted space between the two oranges. This? No, the wasted the white space. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, well, I, I'm going to say two things. One is, um, let's not get too bogged down in the specific footprints. Um, these are really just showing ideas in the broadest sense of what if you put these, this great configuration here, what if you and then I'm going to address the question more directly. But what if what if what if it's an ad reno? It, it, these are just really broad ideas. But it's hard not to respond to what you're looking at, which is fair. Um, I do not believe that in a, in a configuration somewhat like this, let's say, that this would be wasted space. This would be outdoor classrooms, outdoor learning. Um, I Put, you know, potentially playgrounds, there would be uses. And, and again, it's the concept of how, how much of a space would you have between the two wings? 
Well, again, so the design is not finite, but in general, you want your classrooms to have the windows, so you can't bring them too close because then you're just basically looking for one window. Well, that, what I'm driving at is you've got three story buildings, and you're talking about light coming in and out from the east to the west. I don't see it happening unless there's a broader span there. Oh, so your argument is going to be light. Oh, okay. Sorry, we were all reading I mean, it like thought was a wasted space. This is pretty, pretty wide. I don't know what it is. Yeah. Um, but we would do light studies. But, so you, yeah, you, right. you're ahead of us, but okay. absolutely in all of our designs, we'll be doing light studies to show what we're, what we're achieving and what the space would be like. where we've got this fairly sizable town septic that's taking a lot of different buildings. Mm -hmm. Typically on a, on a school site, you have a, a septic system that deals with that school and you have it on site. Mm -hmm. So is a wastewater treatment facility going to be considered part of the school building project or is that something that the town would own as like, a utility upgrade? Not funded it wouldn't by the be funded by the MSBA. MSBA. It would be part of the project. Yeah, it would right. be part of the project, project. not funded by the MSBA. And that could be three and a half million and five million. We don't have that. So is there any design uh, where the existing field space is? Is there any design that envisions the full pre-K through six? Yeah, that's what one thing I was thinking of too is we do have this option, which is one through six, but this is two stories. I think I think there's there's potential for yeah for a three story version of this definitely that that captures the yeah. So if we did that that way, how would schools could stay in session, minimally impact, and then everybody would move a single phase project. project. Yeah. Absolutely. So that that could, you could see that as, as a choice. Yes. Yeah, or like you take up some of that front field and the building's more of an L coming over onto the athletic fields. And then the fields shift slightly south of the ground. I mean, everyone knows the time is money. So that will, having multiple bases will cost the project money. And there, there are costs that you don't realize you get. You don't get more building, you just spend more money. And if there are costs that you don't realize you get, you don't get more building, you just spend more money on something. Um, a similar story could be said for spring space, which I know is not an option here, but communities that have to pay money for a spring space, it just goes out the door, right? They don't they don't realize any brick and mortar of their final final project. And so phasing, if it has to be done, it has to be done to it will add cost to it. And the reason communities consider it is you know, they they end up with a number of that is the cost increase and a different configuration building that might be advantageous, and that's a decision point. All right, continue on? Yeah, we'll jump along. So that was it for all the enrollment um, configuration and site talk. Now we just have a quick schedule update, uh, just remind everybody where we are again. So we're in October, believe it or not. So we're working on our PDP, which is the preliminary design program. And this is all incorporated into that package, which will get uh, submitted to the MSBA in December. Um, and we can jump along here. And these are just the key dates that go along with that. So today we're here at October 8th in the school building committee meeting. As James mentioned previously, we do have a workshop. Let's see, we do have a workshop coming up for visioning on um, October 11th. 
And then these are just the school building committee dates that we have targeted. I still think there's an open discussion for that Thanksgiving week. Yeah, we did. Mark has sent out an invitation for November 26th. I mean, it, it really comes down. We have to have guidance from you folks in terms of the timing of the schedule and just with MSBA and the decisions that have to be made. But we need to be sensitive about to that date for a couple of reasons. It is Thanksgiving week, as, as Mitch mentioned, but we also have parent-teacher conferences. Um, which affect a couple of people in here in terms of their potential attendance. Um, so um, I, I need to get a sense of whether or not can we do the work we need to do by eliminating. The best thing would be to eliminate that November 26 meeting. Um, can we get the decisions made that you need to have made by just keeping the 22nd, the 12th, and the 10th? Yeah, let's, let's take a look. I work plan was an outline, but it gives a sense of I mean, I'm making an assumption that the committee would feel better about not meeting on, on November 26. Is that is that a correct assumption? If it doesn't matter, then we can. The, the question is. Uh, yeah, because on that November day, we did have a vote scheduled to be a review form. So we said, yeah. So then it was just a matter of if we could cram everything. Well, okay, so, so, so one of the things, one of the key things that we scheduled for the 26th was to vote on design and work. Excuse me, I'm sorry, we've got to make sure we got everybody on the same page here. One, one of the key things that, that um, was scheduled for the 26th was, was to vote on design and work, and reducing the, the enrollment options. What I saw putting this presentation together um, one of the things I saw was that the pre-K, I'm going to go out on the list, the pre-K through four doesn't make a lot of sense on Howard um, because it needs two schools on that already pretty crowded site. The, um, like the first through, um, no, the pre-K through four does not make a lot of sense on Howard. The first one through three, um, we've heard a lot of negative feedback on. Um, so, I mean, the question really comes down to, to the committee's ability to make a decision about enrollment and site in the next two years. Uh, I think that'd be tricky. So you're saying um, we instead of the meeting the decision being made on the 26th, could we make it on the 12th? We would have our meeting on the 22nd with another round of information sharing and then perhaps be ready to vote on the 12th. That would be the goal. One of the things we haven't talked about, but I think I think we're not looking at this guy. Um, you, you know, and I have someone mentioned it, right? If you don't do something, it still needs to be done at some point by this community and what is that sort of cost impact that ultimately will be borne by the And so, you know, because it's really easy to say, yes, the biggest building is the most expensive building today and for this project. But as we've also been saying, you're done. <laughs> Everyone here is done for the rest of your, you know, you know uh, civic lifetime. You know, you, you've solved all your, all your challenges. I think the step back from that in our minds is the pre-K four because your pre-K K is that is actually as a square foot the most expensive piece. You're talking about bathrooms in every room, right? So that as a as a component um, is much more involved to have a design. So you can't easily go into spring spring and bring that up to code. It's just you know it's just there's no there's I can't even stress how there's no comparison to trying to do that. Then, for instance, down the road, giving a little help to Howard for two grades. I mean, that I can see as doing. That is smaller money, less commitment. So, to my mind, one of the other drivers is: Do you ever not do an option that doesn't have pre-K for the, you know, for these different reasons? And so, it's kind of coming at it from different directions. What? What variables are real drivers to say, 
don't want to do this great configuration because, or this one because. And what can we get to you for information to help with that is really our aim and you know, why we sort of, first of all, doubled all your meetings <laughs> because there's a lot of information to discuss. And then it brings out the question of, you know, do we need to keep it one six in the mix? Um, so, okay, I, bring, I bring this back up because I think what I heard today, to some degree, these meshes with what we heard, and with what Lori was just saying, what we heard from the educators um, on Friday, where there's, there seems to be two great configurations that we're still you know, wrestling with. I'm not saying we're not looking at the others at this point, we still are, until there's a vote to do otherwise. But um, Well, what about this? I mean, you know, my, my sense is that people may be in a good situation to, to be able to do that vote on November 12th. And if you have to spend a little bit more time at the next meeting to get there. Um, we don't um, immediately take off um, November 26 off the calendar at this point if, if people are not pushing back on that and just leave that as a safety valve if we don't get there on the 12th for some reason. I think we go forward with the idea that between the 22nd and the 12th, that by the end of the meeting on the 12th, we have a decision. If we are still, you know, at a, at a need a tiebreaker, we'll look at the 26th, but to avoid that if we can. Does that make sense to folks? Yeah. Gary, is, is Gary. It, if, if the 12th is going to be kind of like a lot of gut wrench discussion, right? and so we need to absorb, use that time to absorb before we have the vote on the 26th, is there any reason why the 19th doesn't work? Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's a possibility too. Yeah, that's what I was looking at these possible configurations of grade levels. Um, it's worth looking at what we currently have in our schools, and that's we're outgrowing those spaces currently. So all three schools are really pressed for space. We have really grown beyond the, the uh, enrollment size for the, the schools when they were built. Um, cannibalized space, we've taken away art rooms, libraries, tried to find whatever extra space we can everywhere in all three buildings. So if we do not build a school that accommodates all of those grades now, we'll be doing it very soon. Right. And, and again, we MSBA be agreed for, with the assessment data yeah. that you just made because that's why they gave us the okay to move forward with that maximum enrollment. They agreed with that very assessment. Yeah, and I think even trying to build a pre-K through fourth and leaving Howard for fifth and sixth grades, we can see that they're going to grow beyond the Howard School in the very near future. We've just added a fifth classroom for fifth grade this year. Um, so now that's 15 classrooms that we have at Howard currently. And if we expect our population to grow as much as it seems like it's going to, the fifth and sixth grade are going to have to add additional classrooms pretty soon, and you're not really getting back the space of libraries, art rooms. Their projections are around six to seven classes per grade, meaning that the Howard for four could work for five and six, but it couldn't support all to central office. So yeah. that would have to get set up to really be a very standalone five, six school. So right now it's kind of a bare bones school with 15 classrooms, and we're looking at probably 14, maybe 15 classrooms with just fifth and sixth. Possibly. And you're not really getting anything back. Yeah, the late service. Yeah. All right, well, that's what we'll do. We'll try to shoot to have a decision no later than the 12th, and then we'll look for you, whether it's the 19th or the 26th, and we look for another date after that. This is a fast moving process here, too. So I think we should prepare by on the 22nd. I think we're also going to be looking for site selection. So it's coming up quick, uh, and we'll obviously try to get enough information in that next presentation to help help with that. Yeah, help with that. Yeah. yeah, we can. Uh, there's always little last minute tweaks that yeah. we're making. There's a lot of information in here, but we can try to get a, a draft out to everybody probably the day before if that works. Gary's okay with that approach. Yep. Okay. Yeah. 
when we say draft and yeah. letters. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for, for committee consumption only. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, do you have anything else you need to cover? I know, that was it for tonight. Does anyone else have any questions or comments or issues that need to bring forward? Everybody's good with the new start time at 5.30? We continue that? Yes. Very right, good. All right, uh, so our next meeting will be Tuesday, October 22nd, two weeks from tonight at 5.30 p.m. If there's nothing else, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. <laughs>